Hey everybody, it's John from Humor and History. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about the United States is the world's oldest democracy. Now, that being said, it doesn't make it the best at it. And I think the uh, most recent elections proved how fragile it is. And a number of times it's been very fragile for us. But, you know, in my own opinion, I do believe that there are many other countries that have now surpassed us. I mean, just because you're the first does not mean you're the best. Because, uh... I mean, the country was founded in the idea that, like, every 20 years, things should be revamped, and they kind of forgot about that. Um, so let's get into this, and um, it says, uh, what do U.S. elections look like abroad? So this will be interesting. What? See? There you go. Are you kidding me? All right. It is chaotic. It's crazy. It's like you you want to stop people from voting. Yeah. It's, just, it's stupid. Oh. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, the American way. Okay. Elections, by the way, in the in the history of the U.S. have changed. Like there have been some crazy elections, some really peaceful elections, and I mean, if you guys look at like the like the Trump election kind of thing and the stuff. I mean, that's actually really tame compared to some of the things that happened, uh, like in the in the the nineteenth century and you know in the, some of the first elections. So, yep, there you go. That looks like an ink block test. This looks like a toilet to me. <laughs> it looks like a Jackson Pollock. So that's straight up uh, Jackson Pollock. There you go. How do you pronounce that? I don't even know what that is. Gerrymandering. Gerrymandering. Yep. The art of drawing districts to put as many of your voters together, or more often, to make sure the other party's voters are broken up and scattered. Well, now when you tell me what gerrymandering is, then this sounds like cheating. <laughs> Very much so cheating. Yeah, you can draw a line around the people that are most likely to vote for you and call it a district. And that district gets a vote. And they're going to probably vote for you. And it looks and excludes some weird stuff. Yep. That's illegal. I'm sorry. Firstly, Joe Mandarin needs to be illegal. So, and, and, and some of this stuff is like trying to figure out how... Uh, to to do this. So, I mean, when it came to, like, um, elections, in at least in the U.S., uh, starting off, there were no real rules. I mean, there have always been elections, but how to do it as a every four-year kind of deal, well, that was a little different for us, at least. In Australia, redistricting is done by an independent commission, not done by the politicians See, who won those districts. See, that's perfect. So it is a lot fairer. Yep. If you haven't registered to vote, time is running out. With registration deadlines as far as 30 days before the election. What is voter registration? I mean, I know what it is, but I understand why do you have this kind of thing. In Germany, you don't need to register yourself for the vote. In Estonia, yeah. voter registration is automatic. I actually had somebody uh, who was an election officer come over to my house and uh, help me out with my process of voter registration. And mind you, this is in a country of 1.3 billion people. Voter per so I have to say, one of the things about this uh, has to do with uh, this voter suppression thing, has to do with after the Civil War and not wanting the now freed former slaves um, not to vote. And there would be intimidation tactics and things like this. And these local laws were just... The laws were literally abused and weird laws were created and the states still had the right to sort of, you know, to, to do kind of what they, for the most part, what they wanted when it came to, uh, uh, you know, who could vote and how. And like you had to would have to take tests to be able to vote and things like that. And then, of course, you take these old laws. If you remember, we did a video on old laws, even in uh, in the UK that are still in the books or especially in London. Well, they take these old laws and they say, well, they're on the books. And you make arguments 
saying that this law is relevant and here's why and that's why certain people now with the immigration coming through from um, Central and uh, some of South America, they make it sound more legitimate again. And it's tough, but there are some really good lawyers out there that make good arguments. Urging is the process by which... I'm not saying they're right arguments or their heart is in the right place. I'm just saying they make good arguments and that is just separate. Election officials remove uh, names from the voter rolls. Come on, no one thinks of the word purge and thinks of anything positive. We have seen the purge films. Georgia likely removed nearly 200,000 from voter rolls wrongfully. How? I can't imagine yeah. for this to happen in Germany. Nope, you don't get to vote. Nope, you don't get to vote either. Nope. Well, here's the weird thing, and I'm, I'm just going to, on a side note for this, the popular vote, meaning the people that actually physically voted, voted for Hillary Clinton by 3 million over Donald Trump when he became elected. Now, I'm not really making a political statement one way or another because, well, here in the States, you can really get... Uh, nobody really talks about politics. Um, well... At least, at least, if you don't feel like having a fight. Um, and, uh, you know, basically your state goes one particular way, and then all those votes go that way. So you could actually, depending on where you live, you could actually have, um, like in Pennsylvania, you could have everyone go for, uh, a lot of people go for Hillary Clinton, but not all of your gerrymandered districts will necessarily go for Hillary Clinton. And um, they might go for, you know, Trump based on, you know, certain ones have more people in them uh, and or, or more representatives in them. Uh, and it's like something like 7,000 for one represent. I don't know. It's something weird. Um, and then it, it changes the way the whole election goes. So Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Donald Trump won the electoral vote. So every state has a certain amount of electoral votes. It's very confusing. It was made because, I think years ago, it was something like farmers, uh, you know, who were illiterate couldn't vote, or could vote, but um, they wanted to make sure that, uh, like, somehow they were able to, they, they were, uh, these, these, these people were able to vote, uh, whoever voted, and then because the farmers were sort of illiterate that they had these, um, uh, I forget what they're called, uh, delegates that would then say, okay, so Pennsylvania then goes for this particular person or New Jersey then goes for this particular person it was a way for people who didn't know who the candidates really were or understand it that well um, to change the change the way it did the you know where the state went I just probably lost half the audience there but it's confusing I don't even always understand Voting it in America I mean, I, I, is on a Tuesday many people don't vote because they are either too busy or have conflicting work or school schedules yes. to me it sounds like 19th century to be honest not wrong. Also, um, there have been things saying polls should close at 6 or 7 when, depending on who's going, you know, who's running for office or who's like, who could win or needs the win, um, it affects a certain party if you can close early. So people who are working can't leave to work. So they finally had to make a law saying you can leave work uh, to go vote, which is just... What I really appreciate about Germany is it's so easy for you to go and vote. It's on a Sunday, it's on a free day. In India, it's actually illegal to keep your employee from voting. So in Australia, we have this thing called a democracy sausage. You take a selfie with your democracy sausage. You haven't voted in Australia. Oh, that's unless cool. You've gotten your democracy sausage. In the last Estonian parliamentary elections, I think I cast my vote uh, during breakfast. I have this. Identity card. I insert it into a computer reader, pick my candidate, and cast my vote. How long did it take you to vote in your country's last election? It took me two minutes. Approximately a minute. Five minutes. Five to seven minutes. Five to ten. Ten minutes. Seven hours. Forty-five minutes. What? And Thirteen seconds. That's not. It took for me. Wait, wait, wait. It took him the amount of time it will take for me to fly from the UK, from London to New York. This feels How like did the he... opposite. 
of easy to vote. This is not acceptable. It's just not acceptable in a, dem in a democratic country, I think. <laughs> yeah, so here's, so here's the thing with that is it starts with it started when we became a country, you were a landowner and you had to be white and you had to be male. Then you had to be uh, a white male and then you had, to, they dropped the landowner thing, and then you had to be, um, uh, sorry, yeah, you still had to be a white male, but you didn't have to own land. Then they dropped the uh, uh, land ownership, yes, and then, okay, slaves, uh, freed the, the slaves after the Civil War, they could vote. There were rules and regulations as to how they could vote per the states, and so it, then men could vote. And then, of course, suffrage, uh, you know, happened, and women could uh, vote. And there were still, the whole time, uh, suppression laws and things just trying to keep people from voting. So it's tough. But the act of voting, like you go to your local polling place you know once you're registered you know and you just go there you wait in line if you have to or you find out they tell you usually nowadays how long the line is and um, you know I normally go in the middle of the day because I can and uh, you just go to your local church or, or you know the community building or school and you go in you give your name um, I don't think you have to give them any kind of license or anything like that. And you just go in and you vote for your president. You also have they also have a couple of other questions on the polls, like should judges have to retire at seventy or something like that. What percentage of the voting age population was registered to vote in the U.S. in 2016? I'll say eighty percent. Just well, because I missed that. They haven't been doing too well recently with everything else. <laughs> percentage of age. Oh, it's got to be like, tw yeah, okay. I thought it was a little lower than 64%. that. 64%. Yeah, that's not good. That's so People don't put, in the 60s they did, but people just don't turn out for elections anymore because they don't believe that it helps anything anymore. Like, we feel like it's kind of gone all away. As you get older, you start to realize, no, my vote does count, and, and it's important. But when you're younger, they're just like, well, you can vote now. Well, when you're 18, you can get drafted. When you're 21, you can vote. It's very weird. You fight in a war at 18, but you can't vote until you're 21. Because half of the Americans have no voice. Yeah. It's, it's like you, you want to stop people from voting. Why is that so? Somebody please help us. We are at our polling place in Atlanta, Fickett Elementary School. The systems are down. Oh look, there's no line. There's no line at all mm -hmm. out here in what suburban white country. Ouch. <laughs> that's for, for real? That's the reason? Yeah, wow. Oh, oh. That's the South that's for you. The definition of racism. It's the same in South Africa. If you go into, if you want to go into a wealthy white community, everything is easy. If you want to go to the township, I don't even know if you're gonna to get to vote. That was harsh. I can't believe that. Moms and dads took their kids, you know, to vote with them during the civil rights era. Now how I get to do that now? How I get to take my family with me and I can go vote with my family? for the first time and, and that means a lot to me. I think I think this this is a sign of the resilience that I think is what will protect democracy if nothing else. But that American spirit, you have to love it. You know, people are still going out there and standing in the queues and standing in the rain. As weird as it sounds, the only way to overcome this is to vote fight to vote and then change the system by voting. I will never give up on America. Like, if people keep the same spirit, keep the same energy, then undoubtedly a change gone come. It's exactly right. Um, I know this is a, this is a pro vote piece, but the things that are saying are really not wrong. And um, yeah, we really have to deal with that. Now, all there's a saying that says all Paul um, all um, blah, what is it uh, all politics is local when it comes down to it and it really is I mean 
you know, when we look at Trump, we, or, you know, or or Biden, whoever you choose, um, I actually, I mean, I care. Don't get me wrong. It's either an embarrassment or not, but I prefer voting locally um, because my son goes to school, has to do with the school board, uh, the local township, it has to do with things that go on there, and that's what really affects my life. The rest of it is just something I don't want to deal with, but I have to. All right, this is Humor in History, and uh, this is John. Let me know what you think down below, and um, probably said something that's going to piss somebody off or turn out to be somewhat wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got it all right on the spot here. Remember, we don't cut or edit this, or I don't cut or edit this thing. Um, so I just don't have time. Talk to you guys later.